And John Lee would say, when you're sitting in a sala like this with other people, create the perception in your mind that you're sitting outside with nobody else around. The air is clear. The sky is open. The sun is not too warm, not too cold. In other words, create in your mind the ideal conditions, which allow your sense of the breath to open up. So you're breathing in through all your pores. This way, when energy comes up in the body, it has a place to disperse. They talk about kundalini experiences sometimes being very disorienting for some people. That's because there are blockages. One blockage is removed, and the energy runs into another blockage. It's like having a pipe that's clogged. You unclog it, well then it moves further down the pipe, well it turns out there's another clog. So try to keep things clear and open as you can. When anything comes up that's disturbing in terms of the energy in the body, think of it dispersing. It has plenty of places to go. The sense we have that it's pressing against something, that's not breath, it's the blood. Blood pressing against the solidity of the, the walls of the vessels. And you're thinking, well, they too are porous. After all, they're made out of atoms, and there's a lot of space in atoms. So have a broad sense of spaciousness as you sit here. Makes it much more pleasant to be right here. And then you can see what's going on. And one of the things you'll see going on is that the mind is talking to itself. And what we're trying to do is train that habit of the mind to come in on this, come in on that, to be a useful habit. As the Buddha said, you can turn it into one of the factors of jhana. But for most of us, it's very unjhana. Talking about this, that, the other thing, sometimes we can get ourselves all worked up over very little. That kind of speech is useless, as is the inner critic that's very dismissive, that doesn't give you any chance to, to do anything at all. You've got to train your critic. In other words, be critical of your critic, saying that we all want to have happiness in here. So if the critic can be helpful, figure out new ways of focusing on the breath, new ways of directing your mind where it should be going. That's good. You don't want to totally erase your inner critic, because then you just accept everything, and that doesn't get you anywhere. It just leaves you right where you were to begin with. Like a therapist I knew one time whose job was in a walk-in clinic in the part of Vancouver where there are a lot of druggies. He found that the druggies wouldn't come in for the help unless he gave them encouraging pep talks, teach them to be more accepting of themselves. And so they accepted the fact that they were druggies, which didn't help anything at all. So you need an inner critic, but your inner critic needs to be trained. So you need, to be, you need training on how to breathe, training on how to picture things to yourself in your mind, training on how to talk to yourself, all these different forms of sankara. And as you're meditating, you have lots of time to train them, because that's what the teaching is all about. It's a training. It's not just a body of knowledge to discuss and argue about. The Buddhist teachings are there to give you advice how to do this, how to do that, how to find true happiness. But it requires that you train all the different members of your mind, and there may seem to be a lot of them, but they're not infinite. And the more they're trained, the more they work together. So it's harmony in the body, harmony in the mind.